right, let me go back to the grove. And what goes on in the grove is that we, we do know about the cremation of care, thanks to Joan's video. We've seen it. It's on the Internet now. You can watch right. it. What else goes on there? This is these. I guess these things last to what a week, ten days, something like that. Um, it depends on it depends on who you are, as what your role is there, uh -huh. and how long they want to invite you for. Well, I remember the the airport nearby. I don't know Sonoma. So I don't know which what it is, but uh, the jets, private jets flying in, and the, the Henry Kissingers coming, and so forth. Uh, there were lots and lots of names. Big yeah, names. There's, uh, there's big names there um the you could be there for two weeks you could be there for 10 days some people come in for one day you know or three days mm -hmm. um there are places to stay at the grove mm -hmm. which was odd i don't think i saw that on alex jones video there's uh there's actually an underground bunker there which you know i, I i'm guessing that you know he didn't get invited he wasn't privy to, to those kind of things um they do a lot of their their lunches and barbecues actually outdoors, but then there's also indoor facilities. They also have um, buildings that are like collapsible that they put there just for the the event, and then I guess they ship them out. Huh. Um, they have uh -huh. um, they have um, parties, get-togethers. Uh, their homosexuality runs rampant. They have. Uh, gay porn stars and gay prostitutes that come in that either entertain the guests mm -hmm. with like shows or they frolic with the guests. Um, and they have, um, and guess, most everybody participates in these things, right? Most people participate. They at least watch, uh -huh. you know, but no, no one is like walking away and, you know, like, um, I guess if I was, if I had been a high wizard back when, um, president Nixon was there, I understand he walked away. <laughs> there's a there's a recording of him on uh, on YouTube. I've heard that before somewhere. I don't remember where, but I've I've heard that he rejected that. Yeah, he said that he guesses that there the area is too close to San Francisco and uh, mm -hmm. uses a very derogatory term towards gay people uh, mm -hmm. and um, and discusses that there's too many of them there. Mm -hmm. And um, so yeah, I guess he wasn't a fan. I, I saw uh, Ronald Reagan there in '87. That was my first year at the Grove, and um, I've never seen anybody look so uncomfortable anywhere in my life. And uh, you know, he, he looked—he looked like a black man at a Klan rally. I mean, he was just like—he looked like he was. Did, he didn't know what he was getting into before he went. Maybe I, he must have. I mean, he was put into office. Okay, I was told um, by going there and by working with the Illuminati, I was told that only one president in the history of our country was not put in. To the presidency by the Illuminati. The name? A lot of people, a lot of people guessed that it was Ronald Reagan, and it wasn't him. Hmm. He was absolutely put there by the Illuminati. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Why don't take a guess? Boy, I don't know. I'd have to say JFK, if anything. I don't know. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people go with him as yeah. well. Um, uh, no, it was Jimmy Carter. Well, there's your Christian. <laughs> well, well, it wasn't just that. It was. Um, and the story I got was that the Illuminati was backing Ford, and they saw this guy Carter coming in, and they were like, there's no way in hell this guy is going to garnish any votes. Uh-huh. So they didn't push. They just thought, you know, this is a shoe in no, They actually, no they actually just money. didn't bother with it, and he won. Uh. Yeah, and he won. So when, when Reagan came along in, in 80, it was like, oh, hell no. You know, this isn't going to happen again. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're going forth with, you know, everything we have and backing mm -hmm. Reagan. You know, and he won by like, what, he got like every state but one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is said that, uh, I don't know that Obama has gone to the Grove, but uh, it is said that during the last election, Romney, the... Uh, the Zionists wanted Romney in there, and eight million votes disappeared to defeat Romney and put uh, the alleged Barack Hussein Obama in there again. And if you folks want to see what I consider to be inside information worked into a documentary that will tell you all you really need to know about Barack Obama, look up Dreams of My Real Father, not Never Dreams of that. My Father. Yeah. Uh, I think that was uh, Mossad information uh, fed to the uh, producer Joel Gilbert, worked into the uh, 
the documentary. It was too, it's too much inside stuff. I'm a journalist, I know. Uh, I was just left saying this was a, this was put together to drive votes away from Obama. And uh, I had Joel on the program a couple times, and I looked at the video, and I just said, well, there it is. Frank Marshall Davis, obviously his father, obviously. Right. Uh, and quite, quite, a, quite a story. Okay, now, uh, back to the Grove. Tell us a, a few more things about what goes on there. Now, are these people, is it just a, a, a bacchanal, so to speak, with uh, a sexual... Well, uh, drugs uh, and all kinds of diversions, or are there are there policies made there? Uh, there are. I know that they deny policies go on there, but um, you know they like to say that it's just a good old boy club to let boys get together and unwind. Um, that's a type of unwinding I would never want to do. Um, you know, it's uh, there's blatant homosexuality. There's also, you know, the high wizard is there to procure deals. Um, he's to um, what did what did you do there? That's the that's let's go to that that question direct. What did you do there? I've done um, well as I was that I work in the I do the crema I'm in the cremation of care. Um, I also I do spell work at the owl. There is actual spell work that can happen right there, right out in the open. Everybody sees it. Um, I've been hired to do spells for. Uh, politicians for um, rich and powerful, and, and these are generally not spells that happen there. It's they make an appointment. The, the guy that that ran the place when I was there, his name was Alex, and Alex would walk with me the first day I get there to introduce me to everybody, or at least just point out people that I would be doing work for later. Mm -hmm. And that work, in some respects, that work is not always spell work. But you don't necessarily tell the person what you're going to do. It'd be like if you come to me and you said, you know, I've got a construction company that works under me, you know, along with everything else illegal that I do. Mm -hmm. And I want a deal where this, I can make, like, if I'm doing, like, the, the infrastructure, you know, building roads in the country, I know that I could easily make five or six billion dollars. But I've tried everything to get everybody's attention that I can. You know, I send baskets of fruit to everybody, mm -hmm. bottles of Patron to the people I think it will work, money mm -hmm. I try and buy off whoever I can. Mm -hmm. I don't know the right people. Can you do this for me? You know, and it's like, absolutely, you would need to, I would give you a number that you would call and you would negotiate for a price. Um, Who handles the price negotiation? Did. What's that? Who handles the price negotiation? Uh, generally, um, I don't want names. Them. Just some somebody in the organization. It's just a, it's a Satanist. And okay. It's somebody that works in the in like the office. So to All say. right. And then once the number is is ironed out, then uh, you get the then, go sign. Yeah, then I get the go sign and I do it. But it's not always magic. I mean, these people have no idea what I do. So, um, I mean, they know that okay, he practices magic, you know. And I know a lot of them look at me and go, "That's BS," you know. And it's like, well, you know, it's whatever you, if you want, whatever you want, you're going to pay me big money. I'm going to do the best I can. Sometimes it's not a magic spell. Sometimes I know the person to call. Hmm. I can call the person and the next day they'll call you and say, you mm -hmm. know, hey, you know, whatever, whatever you did, the high wizard came through and this is what you need. You hmm. know, these are the forms you have to fill out and this is who you have to fill it out to and deliver it to me and I'll push it through and in three months you'll start getting your money so you know and you'll be amazed and think that i'm the greatest thing since sliced bread uh -huh. and it's not necessarily that that i did a spell i just knew who the contact person was and and that's how a lot of um quote unquote magic happens i understand you know, it's just, yeah it's who you know not what you can well do. that's that's the old the old axioms not what you know it's who you know right um okay you went there Seventeen times was it? Sixteen times? Uh, Eighteen, but who's counting? Yeah, the the minutia of of what goes on there then can be pretty heavy. Uh, it's not necessarily the big ceremonies or anything else. These deals that are made, that these people seek audience with you. Is that it? Is that how it works? Yeah, they they. 
before before they go to the grove, they know that there's going to be a high wizard there. Well, I wouldn't say everybody knows because not everybody knows why they're going. Mm-hmm. But the people in the know, I mean, like, if you had Henry Kissinger on your show, he probably wouldn't be on your show. But <laughs> he could tell probably you Probably not, wizard. yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get tr- I'm trying to get Donald Trump uh, to come on. I'm not directly trying, but there are people who would like him to come on here. I think it would be a, a very interesting hour. Interesting. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, it w- that's the right word for it. It would be. <laughs> yeah. Especially since he he just doesn't seem to have control over that that brain mouth connection. Thing. Well, I like that. I mean, I really like that idea. I, that's that's fun. Uh, you never know what's going to come out. That's right, I don't right. I don't like people so regimented, full of recordings that uh, you push a button and you enter a a paradigm in, and they have a, a ready re, ready reply, and they give it. I don't like that. I don't. I, no, that's one of the appealing things about Mr. Trump. He he does he does shoot from the lip, as they say. <laughs> Okay, now... Uh, go, going yeah. to uh, uh, one other thing, you, you brought up Obama earlier in Bohemian Grove. Um, around 1993 or 94, I was at the Grove, and I was walking uh, through a field with Alex and my security staff. And Alex is pointing out people that, um, people that want to meet with me. And uh, as we're walking, we're, we're like an entourage going one way. Mm-hmm. There's a guy walking on like an intercept course with us. And doing that with the high wizard, like I have my own security staff. Mm-hmm. You know, you you can't just casually bump into me and say, excuse me. Mm-hmm. You know, that could be your last day of, of breathing. Mm-hmm. And um, so I'm looking out the corner of my eye at this guy coming, and I'm thinking, oh, this will be the first excitement of the day. And then Alex stops us and points out this guy off to the far right that wants to meet with me. While we're standing there talking about this, this guy that was on the intercept course with us walks right past. So no excitement today, and that's fine, you know. So this guy lives another day, and Alex says, that guy's going to be president one day. And I look over at this guy, and I size him up, you know, look up and down and look at him, and I'm thinking, there's no way that, I mean, this is 1993, there's no way that, the Americans are ever going to elect a black president. But uh, apparently we did it twice. So, yeah, uh, the 8 million votes, alleged votes notwithstanding. But, uh, yeah, it's quite a story. I refer to him as white because he's half and half. So I think people can call him black if they want. It doesn't matter to me. He certainly doesn't identify with the blacks of this country. Uh, he's uh, in the elite. He's uh, something else in his own mind. Uh, he doesn't. He, he identifies with them when he wants to use them to oh, move of course. the race agenda forward. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. And when he wants to try and take all our our guns off our shelves or make our bullets so they expire, you know, he uh, he certainly identifies with them. Yeah, he's not finished, uh, ladies and gentlemen. He's got over a year left to uh, implement. There are some some big things coming. I'm afraid that uh, will be passed by executive order that are utterly unconstitutional and it's it's not over not over at all we are we are really surrounded with some some losers okay anything else about the grove you want to me pass along uh you've given us a pretty good sketch of what happens well, the, there um the in the cremation of care uh that's a big ceremony uh folks that's kind of the highlight of uh of well in a way it's like a low light <laughs> a low light <laughs> it's a uh, I used to have a flyer from from there uh, that was actually mailed to me, which, which was bizarre to me that they would have my physical address at my home. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm the high wizard, no one knows who I am, but I got a flyer in the mail advertising the cremation of care, and it said right there on the flyer um, that it was a child sacrifice. It doesn't say mock sacrifice. So... Here these people are getting these flyers at home, I suppose, or at their office. Mm-hmm. And if anybody takes the time to read it, mm-hmm. you know, it shows uh, it's a full-color, uh, two-sided, uh, heavy stock cardboard, uh, glossy. Oh, it's pretty you know. brazen. What the hell's going on? Yeah, it's pretty, pretty, it is pretty brazen. You know, this was like, um, it's probably like 1992 or 93. Um, you know, and very, very... Mm-hmm. You know, right there. I mean, and it's like, um, it, it's, it was, I don't 
I don't know if it was called cremation of care on the flyer, but it mentioned uh, come join us for the, the child sacrifice. It was like right there. You know, and I'm like, that's pretty ballsy. Yeah, uh, pretty nutty. But, nutty. you know, when I was there, uh, the, the multiple times I've been there, and I wasn't always there for the cremation of care, um, the I saw the child before and after. So for me, I, the child was alive. But I've heard that is not always the case. And Going back in history, a hundred years ago, I guess when the when the, it's been around for a hundred years, hasn't it? About yeah, I think so. Yeah, in the beginning, they uh, apparently did sacrifice uh, more than they do now. But that's that's I, I would imagine that you know when when there was no internet and right. cell phones were very right. scarce, or yeah. phones were very scarce. Yeah, but yeah, I mean you know murders could take place left and right, and no one would know. There's yeah. no accountability. Uh, that's what and I read. Still, you know, there was still a bunch of children being kidnapped every year back then as well. Correct. Yeah.